have near blizzard conditions up here on the Igman Plateau, but even though they occasionally preempt alpine events with the nasty weather, not so in cross country. They're about to start the women's five kilometer race. Three days ago, before this snow came down, the powerful and popular Maria Lisa Hamalainen of Finland won the very first gold medal of these games in the women's 10K race. And today, she is again favored. She's built for this type of difficult course. And let me now bring in Jack Turner, our expert commentator in cross country, former member of the U.S. ski team. Jack, paint the immediate race picture for us. Well, this is the shortest race of the Olympic Games, but the way the course is laid out, it's also one of the most difficult because right out of the start, it's up a steep hill, down a fast hill, uphill, and that's what characterizes this race. All the downhills are very fast and they never have a chance to rest. So one of the keys is, is that they're going to have to be ready to go the minute they get in the start. They should be soaking wet, totally warmed out, and with the weather the way it is, it's going to be a difficult problem. The weather is lousy for just about everything but cross-country skiing on the Igman Plateau. Temperature 14 degrees, visibility about 300 yards. The downhill was once again postponed, but the women's 5K, 3.1 miles, is on. There is the group of forerunners who ski out to cover the entire course and smooth out the adjacent set of parallel tracks for the racers. And as you can see, some of the racers are starting to come in and stretch after breaking a full sweat and warming up. There will be 52 of them, starting one every 30 seconds. Starting now is Inger Helena Nibraten of the strong Norwegian team. She broke the top 10 list in the last two years World Cup standings, and like all the Norwegians, she is skilled in making quick transitions within a course, a skill that will definitely prove useful over the varied terrain here. There you see the officials marking the skis just prior to the start to prevent unauthorized switching during the race. Well, they don't want anybody to change skis just because they have bad wax dye, and that's part of the game too, you know. Lynn Spencer Galanis of Anchorage, Alaska, ready to sprint out of the start in just a moment. The U.S. women are not yet ready to win medals in this sport, but their program builds year by year, and Lynn has seen the full evolution, this being her third Olympics. Her husband, Jim, is one of the better skiers on the men's cross-country ski team, and they're both known as more dedicated than most of the other American skiers. And there's a shot of the women's team coach, Ruff Patterson, having seen Lynn off. Ruff comes from the world of alpine skiing, and he takes great personal care of his kids. I'm not doing this job for just top international results. I've been very interested in seeing my family grow as people and as competitors. And um, I think I see the same thing with this group of girls. I'm very interested in seeing um, forward progress from the level that they are now to whatever level they can attain. I don't think that I'm in the job to just reap the benefits of um, some medal performance. It'd be nice, but it's not something that I'm really concerned about. Number 39 here is one of the dominating figures of women's cross country for nearly the past decade. This is Raisa Smetanina from the Soviet Union. She won the 10K in the 76 game, won this event in the 80 games, and in all has won six Olympic medals, including her silver in the 10K just three days ago. At 31 years of age, her physical strength has not yet begun to fade. And the woman who won that 10K race three days ago is an imposing figure of power from Finland, Maria Lisa Hamalainen. Maria Lisa won the last three World Cup races in 1983, and she took one of the first races we had this year. Thursday's 10K race was an ideal setup for her. The weather was stable, nobody had a problem with wax, and the course was in excellent shape. The conditions were just right to keep any unusual circumstances or luck from entering into this event. What's important, though, is that she didn't clutch. She put a good race together. She skied the way that she knew she could, and I, I think she's probably so happy there because she realized she did just that, and on the other hand, nobody else skied over their head either. So with one gold medal proudly tucked into her lifetime of memories, this 28-year-old sensation must forget that victory for now and bear down on this demanding 5K roller coaster. Maria Lisa came from mediocre international standings to the World Cup title in 83, and here in Sarajevo is on her way to confirming her status as the best in the world. She's an inspiration too. Kvetta Yeriova from Czechoslovakia, third place overall for the past three years in World Cup competition, and third in this event at Lake Placid, heads up to those tough hills now. Earlier, Jack demonstrated the uphill technique for us. One of the toughest aspects of skiing an Olympic caliber trail is moving from gradual terrain into a steep uphill. 
The diagonal stride technique is used until it gets so steep that you can't get traction anymore. At that point, the skier will move into what's called the herringbone. Shorter steps, digging in the edges, all the way up until a diagonal stride can be used again. I'm going to show you how it's done. All right, at this point, I'm staying in the diagonal stride as long as I can. It's so steep here. I've got to take shorter steps and really dig in the edges. It's even steeper right here, and I've got to shorten up all the way up to the top of the hill, back into the diagonal stride, and down the other side. Another of the Norwegian greats, Barrett Anley, is now in the starting gate. Anley is married to one of the Norwegian team members, and after knocking the socks off the rest of the skiers in the world in 82 in the World Cup standings, she took 83 off to have a baby boy, Ode Kirsten Anley. This difficult comeback in an endurance sport has made Barrett one of the sentimental favorites among the cross-country enthusiasts here, and many hearts went out to her the first day when she finished fourth in the 10K, just missing the bronze medal. Let's see if she can't crack that top three today. So, and some of the earlier starters are now coming in after battling a tough hilly course on a tough snowy day. The Norwegian Inger Helena Niebrotten is coming in smoothly in what will apparently be the fastest time so far. Inger has improved her World Cup standing gradually from 13th to 7th over the past three years, and she comes in, yes, she's sitting in first place. Her time to beat now, 17 minutes, 28.2 seconds. A few Finnish supporters wait impatiently, waving their blue and white flags with hopes that their magnificent Hamalainen will bring the gold home once again. Here's an American, Lynn Galana, striding into the finish area now. Lynn had a fantastic first half of her race and was just about a minute off the winning time so far. She's got to feel great about that. You know, this type of gutsy endurance racing is prepared for by months of continuous aerobic training. I put together a quick education in aerobics for you earlier. You know, aerobics is a term that's being bantered about in a sloppy and mostly incorrect way these days. Aerobics simply means with oxygen, and the aerobic activities make the heart and lungs provide continuous oxygen to the performing muscles. When doing an aerobic activity like swimming or running, the muscles send out an urgent demand for oxygen. The heart must force large volumes of blood through the blood vessels to those muscles. This makes the heart so strong and efficient that when not exercising, it has a much easier time than an untrained heart. Also, this forceful pumping helps flush the arteries clear of the buildup from fat and cholesterol. This is the reason that aerobics produce good health. Most studies agree that cross-country skiers are superior aerobically to all other athletes. Swimmers demand oxygen, but mainly from the upper body. Runners and cyclists, mainly from the lower body. Rollers are relieved somewhat from working against gravity by sitting and sliding horizontally. Now let's look at the cross-country skier. The legs are virtually running full out throughout a race. The back, shoulders, and arms are executing forceful contractions on every step. The abdomen is under constant strain, especially when bobbing during double polling. So we realize two things from this information. One, the Olympic cross-country skiers whom you are seeing are by far the fittest athletes aerobically in the world. And two, a novice like you or me can get on the trails and in a very short time get a great workout for our hearts. This is only my seventh time on cross-country skis, and within 10 minutes of hard work from leaving this spot, I will produce a full sweat, my muscles will demand that oxygen, and I will receive the cardiovascular benefits with every stride. Back at the finish line action of the 5K, here is the top woman of the Swedish team, Mari Risby. Oh, she's having a great race. You know, she's never had a top 10 finish in any Olympic competition. She skied in 76 and 80, and she's just keeping going strong. She went out hard and long stride coming into the finish. She can really be proud of this one. And you can see she's even got the lead right now. Well, as we watch the running clock, she's very close to Niebrotten's leading time of 17.28.2 there at the top of the screen. And yes, two seconds faster, Risby takes the lead with 17.26.3. Risby was the number 38. We expected to see the Soviet skier next, Metanina. But here it is, Hemelinen, unmistakable in her towering form, even from a distance. And you can hear the Finns yelling themselves hoarse through the blustering wind. Diana, she's really skiing well. Her coaches are out on the course. They've got radios. They're letting her know how she's doing in this race, but she's got to keep pushing. She's got to go hard all the way to the finish. She knows she's good. There's her time. She's ahead of Risby right now. It's going to be a question of how many seconds. 
we are seeing a potential gold medal. Maria Lisa skiing her way into the history books here, right in front of us. Well, that's better than 20 seconds of her wrist beat, Diana. She really punched in a hard one, and the only people that I think can catch her are probably uh, Alan Lee and Yeri Oba. They're still out on the course, but she's got to be happy because they're going to really have to get it on to get in here. Look at this. There's pain after a draining race like that, but I guarantee if she gets the gold, there'll be much elation. You know, Diana, you talked about the endurance aspects of cross country earlier in the show, but you know, Maria is really a good example of the power that comes in with every step and every pole plant. She goes further and faster down that track than anybody else. Kaveta Yeriova now skis into our picture. Yeriova has a reputation for inconsistent skiing, but the upswing of that pattern is that she seems to put it all together when it really counts. She was the bronze medalist in this 5K distance at Lake Placid and seems to be coming in with another potential medal performance this time around. Her running time will not allow her to get in as fast as Himalayan, but Jack, she looks like she's going to eclipse Risby's second place. Uh, you could see her pick it up in the last 100 yards here. She is really cooking. Uh, she's already a little bit out but she's going to be ahead of Rispy. Yes, she's ahead of Rispy. She's in second place right now. Alan Lee's the only one left, Diana. 17, 18.3. She eclipsed Rispy by some seven seconds, now sitting with the silver medal. And as you say, the only one out there who could beat it is Barrett Alan Lee. Maria Lisa Hemelainen becoming a familiar face to us Americans at this point, surrounded by her compatriots. And now, the last possible medalist hits the final stretch, Norway's Barrett Alnley. It's nearly impossible to successfully compete again at a world-class level after a year away from a conditioning sport, much less a year away having a baby. Alnley has skied a tremendous race, and the clock indicates a possible silver medal. And she's got it, 17, 14.1, the silver medal. That's got to be the comeback of the year in this sport, Jack. I think that's just great. There's a lot of pressure on her to even make this team, and she should really be proud of herself. Well, the Finns around here have lost all restraint in rejoicing over their heroines' heroics. Hamelainen takes the gold, Barrett Anley of Norway takes the silver, and Kvita Yeriova of Czechoslovakia repeats her bronze performance of 80. And American Lynn Galanis puts in her best race of the season to finish 27th. But the big story today, Maria Lisa Hamelainen. First she wins the first gold of the games, and now... She becomes the first person to win two gold medals at the 14th Winter Olympic Games here in Sarajevo.